Good morning. Let's try it one more time. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful August day. Anybody enjoying summer now? All right. All right. Would you please pray with me? Gracious God, settle our hearts and our minds and our spirits down that we may focus on you. That for this next bit of time, this may be all about you, all about your glory, all about your grace, all about praising you. Gracious God, spin up your spirit in this place in such a way that it cannot be contained. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand if you're able and join as we sing our opening <coughs> songs.
Please pray with me. Gracious God, we do lift our hands, our voices, and our hearts to you. Lord, we lift them up in faith that you would meet us where we are. Lord, we trust you to rescue us and to lead us forward. In your holy name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated. So good morning again. My name's Pastor Diana. What a joy it is to see all of you here this morning, for us all to have the opportunity to gather, to worship, to learn, to grow, and to do all kinds of things together. I want to call your attention to all the awesome stuff that's going on in our church, but I think I need my glasses, otherwise I won't be able to tell you what it is. So <laughs> please continue to turn in your Connect cards, attendance cards, and prayer cards. It's so helpful for us to know what's happening in your lives and to know how to contact you and to keep keep praying for you. 
Also, if you look on the very front of this green page today, there's a number missing right below that important schedule change ahead. Does anybody know what that number should be where that little somehow got covered up? Anybody know? Nine, that's right. Starting on Rally Sunday, which will be September 8th, which is just a few weeks away now, um, we will begin what we'll have uh, what we'll call as education hour at 9 a.m. But on Rally Sunday, it's just going to be fun. There'll be lots of information and tables from every organization in and also associated with and um, with our congregation, our partners also. Lots of things for you to learn and experience that morning. So we encourage you to get ready for Rally Sunday on September 8th at 9 a.m. Worship will shift on September 8th. Um, to 10 a.m. and remain at 10 a.m. going forward. So we have time for education in new ways. If you look on the inside, in the bottom left side, um, Kathy Facer was going to speak with you this morning about the gathering. She's not with us today, but she will at some point come speak with you. I want to be sure you're aware of the gathering. The gathering is a very beautiful thing that occurs here, and it's a ministry through Anoka County. And they are looking for more volunteers to help provide adult respite care. Um, it is beautiful. There is also a support group involved. You'll be hearing more about this from Kathy Facer in the weeks ahead. Please pray about that because if you know you're the kind of person that is called to help with something like caregiver support or respite care, you probably feel a big spotlight shining down from heaven on you right now. So pay attention to those spotlights. Up on the top right, we are collecting school supplies for our Mississippi elementary and daycare kids. This is a great time to pick them up on sale. And just a little further down, we are still working to find all the partners we, I'm sorry, all the volunteers we need for Family Promise. Our week begins on September 1st. There was an awesome training this last week in which several of our congregation members attended and are getting ready to do something fantastic for some families who are experiencing homelessness. If you're available for that and you know you're called, contact Tammy Gallagher to see how you can help. Would you please pray with me over all of these opportunities to serve? Gracious God, we believe you're a part of all that's happening here. We believe you're leading us, you're calling us, you're organizing us. We believe that you are creating a strategy for our church to become more active and more involved in our community. That your love and your grace would not just collect here, but would be flowing from here. That we would be conduits for your mercy. Gracious God, be in everything we plan. Every meeting, every calendar item, every connection, every opportunity, and inspire us to serve you in all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this morning for our miracle report, I just have a few things I want to bring to your attention. Anybody see all the cool flags and stuff out on the roof this morning? Anybody see this? Do you know what that means? It means we're almost done. Woohoo! <laughs> So we're seeing God's miracles and the continued work on our roof and the continued lack of rain at the, you know, at the appropriate moments it happens to be dry. Anybody want to say amen to that? <laughs> it's amazing. We're also seeing God's miracles in our finances, and I want to tell you that our matching funds of $30,000 have all been matched. Woohoo! Amen? Yeah. Yeah. We are very excited and we are looking forward to more because we believe in God's miracles and we believe God has a plan for this church and this building in this place. And another miracle report comes as we continue to plan for this coming fall with all of the education plans. We're amazed at how many people are inspired to learn and grow and explore and discover and serve in ways they never thought they would before. If you're a part of anything new here, would you please say amen? amen. Yeah, I hear you. I got gotcha. you. Would you please pray with me over our miracles? Gracious God, you are always providing 
Lord, we're watching for you everywhere. Reveal your spirit, reveal your lead, and help us to step into your plan. In Jesus' name we pray, amen? Amen. amen. At this time, I'd like to call our ushers to come forward to receive our offering this morning. Darkest water, deepest pain. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Cause my brokenness brought me to you. And these wounds are a story you'll use. So I'm thankful for the sky. Gracious God, teach us always to be good stewards of every resource that you give us. Teach us how to plan carefully, to use carefully, and to follow your lead in everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen? amen. You may be seated.
as we turn to our Lord in prayer this morning. Please continue to pray for one another. We're hearing so many prayer concerns, and I have to tell you, sometimes I'm heartbroken over some of the things that you experience in your families, in your lives. Some of the things that you share We want to love you and care for you. And we hope you are loving and caring for each other in these things. Please keep sharing your heart. I know many of your hearts are heavy, as is mine. Will you pray with me? God, you give us this opportunity to gather right now as a community together to join our hearts in prayer. And so, Lord, I ask that you unify us by your spirit in this prayer. Lord, we seek you. We need you. We need you in our lives. We need you in our homes. We need you in our bodies. We need you in our decisions. We need you in our finances. We need you in our marriages. We need you, Lord, in so many ways. Lord, we need you in every way. We seek your hope, your healing, your peace. We seek your plan. God, can you bring all of these things to us? We reach to you today, Lord, trusting that you can. And so, God, with our hearts unified, we ask you to lead us together. Because we know that we need you, but there are a lot of people who don't know that you are what they need. And the brokenness of this world shows that over and over. Lord, let your love reign. Let your grace rule. Let your kingdom come. Teach us how to create that, your kingdom together. Lord, we need you. As we pray together the words you taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, again, we're looking at Ephesians 1, 17 through 18. Beautiful passage. I have never stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. Amen? Amen. That our hearts would be flooded with light, bright. Did you hear the song they sang just now, Thankful for the Scars? Isn't that a beautiful song? 
Isn't that amazing? I don't know about you, but I think when we've experienced something of that flooding of Jesus' life and Jesus' light and love and grace and healing, something shines forth from us differently than before. Do you know what I mean? Are you hearing the song, This Little Light of Mine, right now? Because I am. <laughs> Flooded with light. So full, it can't stay contained. So this morning, I want to talk to you about a Bible story that is only recorded in the book of Mark, which is interesting because some of these stories are mentioned in more than one of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and this one's only in Mark. It's a really short story, and it's a really weird story. Are you ready? It's a strange healing. Jesus does some weird stuff. Are you ready? Not everybody talks about this one, but today we're going to, okay? Because I think there's a lot to learn from this story. I love this story. It speaks to me a lot. This is in chapter 7, 31 through 37 of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus then left the neighborhood of Tyre and went on through Sidon to Lake Galilee. I don't know if I said those right. If not, tell me later, okay? Going by way of the ter territory of the ten towns. That sounds like a western to me. Does it sound like a western to you? It's probably not. Some people brought him a man who was deaf and could hardly speak. And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. Whoops, sorry. So Jesus took him off alone, away from the crowd, put his fingers in the man's ears. He spat, and he touched the man's tongue. Yuck. Then Jesus looked up to heaven, gave a deep groan, and said to the man, I don't know how to say this, but I think it's, Anybody know? Epatha. I, I looked it up online. I heard six different versions. <laughs> Which means, open up! You got that? But he probably said it more like this, open up, because he was a guy. At once, the man was able to hear. His speech impediment was removed, and he began to talk without any trouble. Then Jesus ordered the people not to speak of it to anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they told it. And all who heard were completely amazed. How well he does everything, they exclaimed. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Please pray with me. Gracious God, clear my mind and my heart of everything that is distracting me, everything that you know I need to set aside until after worship so that I can be focused and clear and say exactly what you have planned. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, that your hearts would be flooded with light. Let's talk about this Bible story for a minute, okay? So Jesus left, left the neighborhood of Tyre, and this is interesting because he is going out in a territory that is not Jewish people, which means for Jesus, he's out of bounds, okay? He was supposed to come and take care of the lost people of Israel. You know that, right? If you were here last Sunday, you heard Tammy talk about that woman who was just asking for the crumbs like a dog, an extra or a leftover. And this is the similar idea here. So this was out of bounds for Jesus. He took his disciples to a place that was not among the Jewish people, right? He's going out a little ways. And people in that area had to be just beginning to hear of him. They probably didn't know a lot about him. More than likely, he'd never been there before with anybody. So how the next part even happens is really extraordinary. And there's just a couple of words here, and it doesn't make any sense at all, okay? Some people brought him a man who was deaf and could hardly speak. 
And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. Let's talk about this for a minute. Well, if he could almost speak, he must have had some hearing, right? If he had some sort of speech, he must have been able to hear at some point because they didn't have special ed at that time for hearing impaired people. He must have had hearing at some point. He must have lost his hearing somewhere along the way in his life. He must have been somewhat of a person of privilege or something because at that time, people with disabilities were outcasts. Did you know that? They were. In some cultures in that time, people specifically who were deaf were put to death because they thought maybe they were scary. Isn't that awful? It's horrible. It's horrible. So how was this guy brought by some people? And who were those some people? Who were they? And how did they even know about Jesus anyway? How did they get this guy to go? This guy couldn't have heard the stories about Jesus, right? How could he have? They didn't have reading. Literacy at that time was estimated to be about 1.5%. And even if he could have read, there wasn't anything in print. He couldn't have pulled it up on his iPhone, nothing like that. There's no way this man, probably, could have known a thing about Jesus. So how did they get him to go anyway? So the fact that it says some people brought him a man, how did they get him? And why? And where did he even come from? So I want you to see the miracles already in place in this story, just at this place right here. There are miracles already in this story. How did he get there? So this man probably knew absolutely nothing about Jesus at all. Can you imagine? He was probably seeing the crowd of people hanging around the bustle to get to Jesus. There were probably crowds around Jesus most places he went at this point. Many people wanting to be touched or healed, babies wanting to be blessed in hopes that they would survive and do well. Many things like this. He probably knew nothing about him. And these people brought him to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Jesus took him off alone. Wouldn't you be scared to death? Who is this guy? Where are we going? What are we doing? How did Jesus get space from the crowd? Hey, we're going over here. Y'all do whatever. I don't know. Order a pizza. We're going over here. How do you do it? How do you get over there? Jesus took him off alone, away from the crowd. And Jesus does the weirdest stuff. This is super weird. Don't you think? He puts his fingers in his ears. He spat. He touches his tongue. Don't touch people's tongues. You learned that in preschool. (laughs) Don't do that. He touched his tongue. What do you suppose the man was thinking? He was thinking, what's going to happen to me? I don't know. And then he looked up to heaven. I've been thinking about this. This is an extraordinary moment in the Bible. This is someone who had to have been experiencing massive pain in his inability to communicate. It is so devastating when this occurs. It occurs for many reasons, especially later in life. When people lose the ability to communicate, he had to have been so alone, so alone, and so afraid. And then here's this guy putting his fingers in his ears and touching his tongue and looking up to heaven. What's happening right now? I've done some study on this. I've read a lot of theories about maybe what Jesus was doing at this moment. And I think I, think I have an idea based on a bunch of other people's ideas too. What if Jesus were doing 
the beautiful act of meeting someone right where they are. What if Jesus were doing the very first sign language? So this man didn't know. What if Jesus were saying, You got it? Would you know what was going on if those loving eyes looked into your eyes and said, wouldn't you know? Isn't it beautiful? You know, I think God does some really weird things sometimes to teach us some really beautiful things sometimes. I don't know if you've ever experienced anything weird to get to something beautiful. But I know many people who have, as have I. So he puts his fingers in his ears and he touches his tongue and he looks up to heaven and he gives a deep groan. And I wonder if the man could feel his body vibrate when he groaned. And all of a sudden he says, open up. And, you know, it's obvious that open up probably had some meaning with his ears and his his ear bones and his, his, what are those called? Eardrums and everything, the cochlea and the the nerves. And this rush of sound must have just gone, whoa, in his ears. I can relate to that. I remember the first day that I first got my first hearing device. I, I don't know if you know that I have a hearing disease, a progressive hearing impairment disease, and I remember the first day I got that first hearing device, and the the people at Starkey were tuning it, and they played Mozart, and I just burst into tears because I couldn't believe what I hadn't been hearing. I mean, I just burst into tears. I cried for about three days because I couldn't believe how beautiful everything sounded. It was amazing, and I had a bad headache for about three days, too. It's overwhelming. Hearing aids are overwhelming. They're hard to adjust to. Can you imagine the rush of sound he must have heard? And then all of a sudden he was talking. How is that possible? He was talking. And it made sense. Can you imagine this? But I wonder if open up had more meaning. I wonder if it did because there's other places in the Bible where we see those words open up. Here's another one in Matthew 3.16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. So was Jesus saying to the guy's ear canal, open up, or was he saying to heaven, open? Maybe he was saying both. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove alighting on him. And there's another place where we see open up. Luke 4, 18 through 19, Jesus quoting from Isaiah about himself. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. What do you hear? Do you hear chains breaking? Do you hear bars opening, jail cells opening, prisons opening? Freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Open up. It's time to get out of the prison. It's time for new life. Or what if there's more? What if open up refers to a a squashing of a conduit? What if open up means open up the conduit? Remember, Jesus is the vine where the branches. And if you take a straw, just like if you take a vein in your body, and if you take a plant and you pinch off the conduits, life-giving water, blood, substance, whatever it is, doesn't pass through the conduit. Do you agree? If you pinch it, it doesn't carry fluid. It doesn't carry life. What if open up is here too? I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, I will flow through you and you will bear fruit that looks like me. I'm excited because in the fall, our children are going to spend one week on each of the fruits of the Spirit. And so are we as grown-ups in coffee and conversation. It's awesome. So are we. 
This is it, the conduit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So when Jesus says, open up, is it possible that he is calling on everything? He is calling on heaven. He is calling on himself as the vine, and he's calling on the man's ears. And he's saying, open everything. Open your heart. Open your mind. Open it all. Are you ready? Because what happens next is more than extraordinary. More than extraordinary, because once the man was able to hear, you know what happened, right? He started talking. He started talking. And even though Jesus instructed him not to tell, and you know, this is a whole study right there. There are a lot of places in the Bible where Jesus tells people not to tell. We don't really know why. That's going to be on the top ten list of what was that all about. Don't you guys agree? We're just guessing. There's a lot of good guesses, but we don't really know why. But this is one of those times when he told him not to tell anyone, but this guy couldn't contain himself. He just kept telling people, do you know what happened to me? That's how we know he took him off alone. Do you think this guy thought in his mind, I'm going to make sure that people 2,000 years from now hear what happened to me that day. That guy stuck his fingers in my ears and he touched my tongue. And he said, open up, and I did. And once he told me to open up, I couldn't stop talking. I was healed in such a way that I could not contain it. I knew love, I knew grace, I knew light. And I could not stop. What were those who heard amazed by? The healing? By Jesus or by the way this man responded? What do you think? All three? I do. I do. Where are you in this story? Where are you? Are you like some of the people in the crowd today? Hearing about Jesus, wondering if God is really so personal with people, really so involved, so loving, so kind, to meet you where you are, speak in a language you can understand where you are, take you aside personally, be so intricately careful with you, to begin your healing? Are you in that crowd? Are you curious to learn more? Is that where you are in the story today? Or are you like others in the crowd? Are you more like Jesus' disciples who may have experienced more of God's hope and healing so you know how beautiful it is? You know. Are you watching? to see who you can bring to Jesus next? Are you looking for who needs Jesus next and saying, how do I get you to Jesus? How do, I, how do I get you to come with me? I gotta tell you about Jesus. Are you in that crowd today? Or are you like the man before healing today? Not sure how to belong in the world feeling like maybe you've lost your voice or your sense of fitting in? Are you wondering if there's hope? Or are you somewhere between? Maybe hardened by frustration or feeling closed off, not sure why God's love just seems to be not happening. Not sure why grace is so hard. Feeling anxious about things that didn't matter to you before. Are you not sure where Jesus is? And hoping to be opened by God's love, but a little bit afraid to ask for what that would be? Or are you like the man after? Are you like the man after the healing who's so thankful 
for the troubles and the pain and the scars because it gives you that testimony. It tells you who Jesus is and it gives you the story to tell. Where are you today in this story? Where are you? Where do you want to be? Because you can choose. You can ask. I've never stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. No matter where you are in this story, there is always another plan. There is always more to be healed. There is always more to learn, more to see, more hope to be found, more new life to experience. There is always another call, another opportunity, another person that needs you to bring them to Jesus. Another encounter with God waiting, always. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you wisdom to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. Say this with me, if you will pray it for each other now. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. Please pray with me. Gracious God, your word is so rich. There's so much to learn. There's so much to understand in all of these stories and how beautiful they are, Lord. Jesus, thank you for healing that man that day. Thank you for taking him aside and for being so kind to him. Thank you that he told the story even though you told him not to. Thank you that we have a chance to talk about it today. That we can learn from it. Lord, we want your healing too. We need you. Meet us where we are as well and set us free. Open us up in every way possible for new life, new love, new grace, new beginnings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand? as we join together to sing our closing song today.
I cannot tell you how good it is to hear you sing today. That is amazing grace. It's beautiful. May you feel free today, freer than you did before you came in the door. May God open you up in ways that surprise you every day. May God's grace go before you, walk alongside you, underneath you, behind you, lead you in all things. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.